focus a lot on Kubernetes. Kubernetes isn't the only way to run an application. In fact, I often tell people, make sure you need Kubernetes before you run Kubernetes because not only is it a beast within itself, but there are also a lot of pieces to the Kubernetes puzzle that sit on top. So service mesh solutions, GitOps solutions, resource optimization solutions, virtualization solutions, like there are a lot of things that can sit on top of Kubernetes. And because of that, you have to understand that if you want all that, or rather, if you need all that from a business perspective, you wanna make sure you have the people to manage it for you. But let's say you just say, hey Mike, I need a way to scale containers. Maybe you're not thinking about anything GitOps related. Maybe you're not thinking about any of these third party tools and add-ons. Maybe you just wanna use some Azure solutions to get applications up and running. Well, you can absolutely do that. So first there is Azure Functions. And Azure Functions are for event-driven applications. So maybe something around like IoT or anything with an event bus, okay? So anything that there is some type of trigger, right? Something occurs, a trigger occurs, the code runs. That's something that's really event-driven. Again, something occurs, sends a signal of sorts to the code, and it says, all right, kick this thing off. That's an event-driven app. Now the next piece is Azure App Services. And to be honest, these are just for web apps. So if you have something that's external, somebody needs to hit your application, maybe it's like an e-commerce website or something along those lines, whatever it may be, even if it's another server or service that you know needs to hit your application and it's web-based, you can use Azure App Services for that. But again, it's only for web-based applications and Azure Functions are really used for event-driven apps. So let's say you say, okay, well, I don't need something that's event-driven and it's on a web app, I need to actually run some type of service or you know different pieces of an application stack. Well, Azure Container Instances, Azure Container Apps. Okay. So Azure Container Apps, I would say is more like Kubernetes centric in a sense, as in like it's built on Kubernetes and it has Kubernetes like primitives. So it's like a Kubernetes light of sorts. Now, a couple of things to remember, you can only have two virtual CPU cores and four gigs of memory up to that amount. You can't exceed that amount. So if your application needs more than that, can't run it on Azure Container Apps. The next piece is there's no cross-site replication or cross, I'm sorry, cross-region replication. So what that means is let's say you want to make your app highly scalable. You know, you're running in US East 1 and you want to run in US West one and maybe some other place. And you could do that in, in AKS. You can have, you know, multi, multi region support. You can't do that in Azure Container Apps. And there is no privileged container support. So if you have an application that needs to hit the host, or if you're trying to use a container image that needs privilege escalation, because some do, you won't be able to use it. Now, with Azure Container Instances, you can have applications that are larger than four virtual CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM. I feel like that's probably okay for the majority of people. <laughs> and I was actually reading a couple things where I haven't seen this personally in my consulting practice, but what I've seen is it could sometimes be more expensive than just running your application on an Azure VM, okay? So there are a lot of pros to each of these solutions and there are also a couple of cons, of course. So if you want something that's Kubernetes centric where you can use all these third party solutions but you don't wanna to have to fully manage Kubernetes, well, that's where maybe something like AKS Automatic can come into play. So AKS Automatic is essentially a best practice cluster out of the box. You still gotta do the YAML thing, you still gotta do any GitOps stuff that you want on top, although you can use like the GitOps services and such in Azure, but you still have to manage Kubernetes for the sake of managing Kubernetes. It's just, I'll call it a level of abstraction above you know, standard AKS, for example, or any managed Kubernetes service.